Leader of Third Party. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I believe we are all in agreement in this House that building a new paradigm in this province must be done, uh, a new paradigm for forest management in this province must be done in full partnership with Indigenous peoples. Part of this is recognizing the fact that the status quo of old growth logging is currently happening without the consent of many Indigenous peoples in our province. I'd like to quote Dorothy Hunt, Chief and Counsel, Kwagil's First Nation, who has some very powerful words to say about what's happening in her territory. Quote, the Kwagil's First Nation is not opposed to logging, but we have had a ban on old growth logging in our territory for over 10 years. Yet new logging approvals continue to move forward without meaningful consultation and consent. We asked this government for deferrals in all remaining old growth in our territory more than five months ago. And yet we still see new old growth logging being approved in our salmon bearing watersheds. Recently, Western Forest Products logged right into our salmon spawning rivers. Through you, Honorable Speaker, to the Minister of Forest Lands Natural Resource Operations, Quaggyoth Nation would like to know, will the Minister give a directive to Western Forest Products and Regional District staff to stop violating our rights, title and Douglas Treaty and defer old growth logging so that we can begin having much needed government to government conversations? Minister of Forest Lands and Natural Resource Operations. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, and our government is strongly committed to implementing the 14 recommendations from the Old Growth Report. And the first report, of course, is to engage the full involvement of Indigenous leaders and organizations, and our ministry is doing that. And I would be happy to reach out to the member and to the to the um, to the leader, to the chief, and and talk to them about their issues because we know how important this work is. It's it's our, the number one recommendation from report is one that we take very seriously and it is to engage the full involvement of Indigenous leaders and I would be happy to talk to them about this. Member for North, oh, the third leader of third party. <laughs> Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Uh, I, I, I guess I'm struggling with what strongly committed to the recommendations really means coming from this minister and this government given that We've missed the first important deadline on deferrals of old growth that need protection. And now we're hearing from Indigenous communities that have indeed not been consulted with. This is Chief Randy Cook, Makwala of the Ma'amtagila First Nation. He says, and I quote, collaboration between First Nations governments will be key to moving forward. BC timber sales continues to high grade and target ancient, culturally significant red and yellow cedar old growth forests in Ma'am Tagila territory in both the Great Bear Rainforest and on Vancouver Island. He has a question, Honorable Speaker, to the Minister of Forest Lands and Natural Resource Operations. He asks, Will the minister tell BC timber sales to cease all logging of old growth forests to show that BC is a leader in ending the unethical practice of old growth logging? And please, could you start with my territory where BC timber sales and companies like Lamar Lake Logging are destroying culturally modified trees and the last of our sacred trees of life, the great cedar tree? Minister of Forests. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And there are thousands of hectares, <coughs> excuse me, of protected old growth trees across BC. Uh, there's in Clayquot Sound, there's 170,000 hectares. Crystalline Creek, there's over 9,900 hectares. There's almost 600 hectares in Quisum. In Compalu Valley has 5,000 hectares and I could go on. There are hundreds of thousands of hectares of old growth forests that have been protected and we are committed to working with Indigenous governments on additional areas of old growth deferrals and protections. All of the protections, all of the deferrals that were done in September were done with direct consultation, with direct discussions, government to government with Indigenous governments. And we will have also protected old growth trees through Together for Wildlife and modernized land use plans. And we continue 
to defer logging to, to support the caribou conservation work, which was done in consultation and support of Indigenous nations, protection for spotted owls, again, in consultation with uh, Indigenous nations, protecting the marble muralet and northern goshawk recovery plans. Minister Speaker, paradigm shifts take time. And we will work with all our partners, including the government to government discussions with Indigenous nations to make sure that we get this right. Member for North Saanich and Islands. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, what's clear by the Minister of Forests uh, response is that they're getting it wrong. They're getting it wrong because you can't consult about trees that are already cut. And the minister, when asked a direct question about, uh, about an indigenous leader, uh, Randy Cook uh, in North Island, starts to rattle off uh, in, about other areas that are protected that are not in the territories that we're talking about. Quoting New Chatlat Nation Hereditary and Band Council Chief Jordan Michael, New Chatlat Nation is fed up with the BC government and logging companies gaslighting our people. In fact, it's hard to tell the difference between logging corporations and the government sometimes. We want to end the theft of our old growth rainforests and steward our lands in a way that benefit everyone, not just wealthy shareholders. When will the Premier, the Minister of Forests and the Attorney General honor the rights and title of the new Chatlat Nation and stop prioritizing Western forest products profits over the health of the environment wild salmon and my people's cultural heritage in the old growth forests of Nootka Island, end quote. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation. What specific steps has he taken to date in, partner with, in partnership with the Flynn Roar to begin to prioritize reconciliation and restore Indigenous self-determination, decision-making and stewardship in the management of our forests? Minister of Forests. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And again, we are committed to government to government discussions with Indigenous nations in this province as the number one recommendation from the old growth report. And I will remember the, I will remind the member that the old growth report was written by two illustrious uh, foresters in this province, Al Gourley and Gary Merkel. And Gary Merkel is a member of the Taltan Nation. And we know that we need to, we need to have done the, what we have done is those 14 recommendations where we uh, deferred over hundred thousands of, of hectares of old growth forest. But we also know that we did that in discussion with Indigenous nations. And we have more to do. We don't deny that. We have more to do. And we will be reaching out to Indigenous nations. And we will be reaching out to them on a government-government basis to discuss those important, to have those important discussions about their land, about where they, the nations that want to be involved in forestry, the nations that want to be in log, uh, involved in, in tenure management and in stewardship of the land, because we recognize how critically important that is. And we are committed to doing that. Member of member for Abbotsford South. No, hey, excuse me. Mr. Speaker, sure. I have a supplemental. Member go for supplemental. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I think uh, whoever's making the decisions about who's answering these questions, just put Indigenous nations on notice as to the rank and file of where uh, the Minister of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation stands in the grand scheme of things of this government. Because my question was not about forests. My question was what uh, was what uh, was about what the Minister of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliations has done to advance this conversation. A question specific to that minister, a ministry in which I hold to high esteem, Mr. Speaker. Grand Chief Stuart Phillip, President of the Union of BC Indian Chiefs has also called for an immediate protections to create space for proper consultation. And he said to have good faith conversations, we must quote, put away the power saws, end quote. UBCIC has written a letter to this government explaining why adequate funding is a critical component of reconciliation and a shift away from old growth logging. I quote, with a lack of critical and accessible funding combined with the government's overwhelming influence resulting in indigenous dependency on old growth logging jobs and revenues, First Nations communities are unable to exercise their right, title and rights to freely pursue their economic options consistent 
with the protection of old growth forests and indigenous self-determination, end quote. To quote the letter again, quote, conservation financing is vital to support and advance sustainable economic self-determination in First Nations communities to ensure that an equivalent economic alternative to old growth logging is available for these communities, end quote. Again, my question is to the Minister of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation. Has the minister, along with his counterpart in Flynn Roar, brought forward a proposal for conservation financing as a central part of reconciliation and a new forestry paradigm for next month's budget? Minister of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I reiterate what my colleague, the minister responsible for this and for the old growth strategy has said. The first recommendation of that report, which was co-authored by Mr. Merkel of the Tall Tan Nation, commits our government to work with Indigenous peoples. I have the greatest respect for Grand Chief uh, Stuart Phillip and I'm aware of the correspondence that the member refers to. And of course, will continue to be involved as a member of the Executive Council in the decision making respecting this critically important file. We are playing a supportive role across government and will continue to do so. I thank the member for his question. 